The rest of the media is playing catch up now on the scandals that are rocking this administration. Benghazi, they still don't have the story right, but at least they're on it again. The IRS, who would have seen that one coming? And the AP, what? They'd be monitoring people's phone calls? Here's what I noticed um, today. I sat in a production meeting and I said, has anybody noticed there is, no, there is no name for any network for this scandal yet? You know, it's all, you know, hey, it's this gate, it's that gate, it's gate gate. It, there's no gates. No gate has ever been used for this administration, ever. That's the first time since Nixon. There's some other first since Nixon's too, but in this administration, but I digress. As I talked about it this morning, I went on the air and I said, could you just, could you just tweet a name idea? Hashtag O scandal names. And it uh, was trending uh, when I was on the radio today. I think it was number three worldwide on Twitter. And we'd still love for you to tweet your names for this, um, this scandal that is rocking America. But as we got on the air, I realized that nothing really worked without the gate because that is kind of the explanation. The word gate means White House scandal now. And we all kind of know that. So we thought, okay, we're, we're going to have to use gate. But what do all three of these things have in common? How could we tie all the three of these together? What do they have in common? They have arrogance, fundamental transformation, and intimidation. Those three things. And let me explain. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start with Benghazi. What were they doing in Benghazi? Easy. They've been doing it for a few years now. They're transforming the Middle East. The administration has decided that things would be a lot better if the Middle East was in a different kind of shape with different leaders. And so we have been providing military support to overthrow several governments, but one in Libya. Um, I believe the term that Hillary Clinton used was, we came, we saw, he died, and then there was laughter. The administration um, supported the overthrow of Egypt and then Libya, and then they decided that's not enough. There has to be another one, because Saudi Arabia asked us to, the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria. And so what we were doing in Benghazi is running guns through Benghazi, Turkey, into Syria to the Syrian rebels. That's what we were doing. I know nobody wants to talk about this, but that's the fact. They have thrown their support behind the Muslim Brotherhood in Washington, and we did it in Egypt um, and throughout the Middle East. We have supported revolution and violent overthrows of governments. So when you look at Benghazi, why did Ambassador Stevens and three other heroic Americans die? Well, because this administration was arrogant enough to say, we think we should transform the Middle East with the Muslim Brotherhood. And we know if we explain that to the American people, they're just too stupid to understand that American people won't be with us. So they had to break a few eggs. I think it was Stalin, wasn't it? It was Stalin that said, we have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. Well, what that means is you're going to do whatever you have to do. You'll go around international law, and in the end, if a few people have to die, well, it's best for the collective because we're going to make an omelet. So a few people have to die. If Ambassador Stevens death happens, well, okay. I mean, we're going to have to cover it up, but it's worth it. We're making an omelet. But when you cover something up, it's always the cover-up. You have to intimidate people. You have to intimidate the witnesses, and that's what we found last week on Capitol Hill. Now, let's switch gears to the next scandal. Let's go to the IRS. What's the IRS really all about? This is about transforming political dissent. Our First Amendment gives us the right to petition our government, the right to march in the street, to engage in civil, civil disobedience if we have to. That's a right that we have, guaranteed by the Constitution. But this administration is so arrogant, they believe they can pick and choose who the First Amendment applies to. It's the fundamental transformation of freedom of speech. That's what this story is really all about. This president has not only belittled, but he has used the weight and power of the federal government to harass, intimidate, and attack his detractors. We have uh, told you this for a while. I mean, we had to move heaven and earth just to get permission to assemble in Washington, D.C. for restoring honor, and you wouldn't believe what the federal government, at uh, the, the very last minute, I think they made us double our security, which we were broke. America is now learning about something that we told you about over a year ago on The Blaze, that conservative groups like the 912 Project and the, and the Tea Party, what they have endured now for two years. 
They were asked for their donor roles, printout of Facebook posts, what books they were reading in groups. One group, the American Patriots Against Government Excess, had to file a book report on the 5,000-year leap. That book has been in print for 30 years. Who, who is talking about the 30-year leap except our viewers and listeners? Even individuals like this prominent Catholic professor who claims the IRS audited her because she spoke out against Obama. They demanded, who's paying you? Really? When Benghazi happened, all the evidence was in, and it was clearly pointing to a planned terrorist attack. The president, what did he blame it on? This is important. Freedom of speech. Not the terrorist who committed the violence. No, it was a disgusting, awful video that was to blame. As if somehow the violent actions in Benghazi could even be partially justified due to someone expressing their right to free speech. It was the same thing when extremists shot and killed American troops in Afghanistan. What, who do they blame? They blamed troops for burning the Koran as if it partially justified the murders. They're blaming America and they're blaming our free speech. The president early on advised people not to listen to me, not to listen to Rush. He said instead, you should read the Huffington Post or Al Jazeera. That was a nudge. But what they've been doing lately is targeting conservatives, and that's a shove. Remember, in that line, it's nudge, shove, shoot. You speak out against this administration, and you are targeted by them. Now, that brings us to the AP, the last scandal. What is this truly all about? This is about transforming the media. Middle East, Muslim Brotherhood, freedom of speech, and Muslim Brotherhood. At the heart of the AP scandal, everybody's going to tell you, oh, it's a deal about a source and a leak. Well, kind of. The White House had a major leak, and they have to stop anyone from speaking out. Here's what really happened. They had a leak. The White House said, hey, don't run that story. The AP didn't for a while, and they said, give us your source. They said, we're not going to give you our sources, rightfully so. They didn't. And the DOJ went around the Constitution. Or did they? We don't know. They may have broken laws. They may not have. We don't know because we can't ask. They don't have to tell us. They've so profoundly changed our government and the way what we know about our rights in the past eight years, specifically in the past five, that even the executive director of the AP isn't even sure anymore if they broke the law. Watch. Do you think something illegal was done? I have no way of knowing if something illegal was done because we really don't know anything except that they have seized secretly the phone records for two months of uh, AP phones, uh, mm -hmm. 20 different phone lines. And it's, I, you know, it's amazing. They don't no know. know How illegal. bad is it here in America? It's so bad we don't even know if they're required to ask permission to tap a phone anymore. If anyone wants to know what rights you've lost in the last four years or eight years, here, well, here's one. Tapping our phones. I mean, journalist phones now. Now, why did they do this? Why did they do the biggest overreach that you've, anybody's seen? Well, they're not just trying to find a leak. They're sending a message. They're not sending a message just to those in Washington. They're sending a message to all reporters. If you worked for the AP, and you were the one that had the source, how nervous are you? If you're going to do a story about the government, how nervous are you? Let's say you work for the AP and you're not even going to do a story, but you're having an affair. How comfortable are you knowing that the government may have tapes of you talking dirty to your girlfriend? And if you happen to be reading something and it has the story and byline AP, how comfortable are you that they are now going to give you the ideas that they have? Or are they somehow or another giving you the ideas that somebody in Washington said, listen, buddy, I know what you have and I know what you're going to do and uh, you're not going to do that. This is, this is how out of control this is. And to give you an idea that this is not hyperbole, understand this. This president has prosecuted more whistleblowers than all of the other presidents in American history combined. If you dare speak out against this administration in any way, your reputation, your career, your financial situation, your life is in danger, you may go to prison for 30 years. Thomas Drake merely revealed that the NSA spent $1.2 billion on a contract for a data collection when it could have been done for $3 million. Remember when we used to complain about the $500 toilet seat? Ronald Reagan didn't put those guys in jail. He protected them. This guy 
could have saved us billions. His home was raided at gunpoint, and he was forced out of his job. He's still not really working. They threaten the watchdogs, the whistleblowers. Shut up, sit down, or go to jail. Then, with the AP, they're also threatening the reporters. Want you to know we're here. We're everywhere. We hear everything. This cripples the power of the press. And believe me, very few have the courage to speak out. And very few networks are willing to be called conspiracy theorists because it is so pervasive and no one will speak out. All the reporters had the same sources and same information we had on uh, Saudi Arabia, all of them. All the other networks spiked the story. We didn't. And we stood alone and we were called conspiracy freaks. That's okay. All that matters is that in the end of the day, I've told you the truth as I understand it. So that's what this is really about. Transform the Middle East, transform the First Amendment, and transform the media. That's it. It's the fundamental transformation of the United States in its last phase, and it's done really with one word, intimidation. That's what this scandal is all about. A government that is tyrannical, that is using intimidation, fear, make people fundamentally afraid. So from here on out, this network has decided to call this scandal Intimigate, because that's what this is really all about. But since this is an opinion show, I've decided to change one letter. And besides, I've, I've been told by um, SNL that I'm a horrible speller. So we're going to call it uh, Timogate. <laughs>